Station. This is Kelly Graveson at Douglas Intermediate Elementary School. How do you hear me? Hi, Kelly. Loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station and the Expedition 36 crew. We're glad to be with you in Massachusetts today. Thank you so much for the honor of speaking with us. Uh, before I introduce the first student, I wanted to let you know that some of us saw astronaut Stephen Bowen on Friday, and he said to say hello to all of you, and that, Chris, you need to um, get your hair cut again. I'd like to introduce Erin yes, with great, our first great. question. Yes, Hi, my name is Erin Korea, and I'm in seventh grade. My question is for Chris. What shocked you the most about being in space? Hi, Erin. Uh, that's a fun question to think about. And uh, I'd have to say it's how awkward it is to what to do with your hands when you sleep. Uh, when you try to sleep in space, you really don't know where to put your hands, and that's a funny feeling to get used to. There's also some serious answers I could give you, but on the last week of school, you probably want to hear about how funny it is to deal with our hands when we try to sleep. Hi. Hi. My name is Ryan Dixon, and I'm in sixth grade. This question is for Karen. And what is your favorite time of day in space? Hi, Ryan. Actually, there are a lot of favorite times. It's, it's fun all the time here. Even when we're working, the time is enjoyable. But I have to say, it is nice to be able to take the time and look down at our Earth and take pictures. Um, it's just something, obviously, that you don't get to, do, get to do when you're on the Earth, see it from that vantage point. So of all the favorite times, uh, I think that is my most favorite. Hi, I'm Jonathan Payne. My question is for Luca, and um, uh, what does it feel like when you first wake up in the morning? So that's a very good question because in space uh, we only uh, we only get fatigued when we're doing something very physical like working out or running on our treadmill lifting weights in our uh, special machine that the rest of the time your body is float floating about is really rested so when i wake up in the morning i i feel completely rested and i'm i'm just ready for another day here on the station Hi, my name is Kylie LaFortune, and I'm in seventh grade. My question is for Chris. What is the most difficult task to do in space? Well, um, I think the most difficult task is the one you're doing right then, right now. Because any, one, any given time up here in space, we could do something that could uh, possibly hurt ourselves or more frequently do something uh, incorrect to the space station. So it's, it's really hard when you have to focus like that all day long. So um, trying to put all that together and not make mistakes is, is a job that we work on e every single day. And uh, that's probably the most difficult thing, is to stay focused the whole entire time we're up here so that we can do our best and, uh, and keep the space station in a good, healthy, a good, healthy spaceship that it is currently. Hi, I, my name is Nolan Beckwith. I'm in sixth grade, and my question is for Karen. If you had the opportunity, would you like to live in space for the rest of your life? Well, space certainly is a very magical place, and I think I could spend a long, long time here, and even longer if I could bring my, my family here with me, uh, my husband and my son and my dog. I would love to have my dog here, too. Uh, so it, it, would be, it would be hard to live here for the rest of my life without the things that I love dearly, like, like those that I mentioned. But space itself is just, it's fantastic living here. It's so easy moving around. 
Um, I, I, what would be hard is living here for many, many years and then going back to Earth where there's gravity. Your body would certainly adapt to there being no gravity, and I think you would have a hard time living on Earth again then. Hi, my name is, hi, my name is Kylie Blake. I'm in the eighth grade, and my question is for Luca. How did you become Abigail Harrison's mentor, and what is it like having her act as your Earthbound liaison? Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. So I was attending a shuttle launch um, as part of my training, as a matter of fact, and at the airport, uh, this young girl that must have been about your age at the time asked me if I was an astronaut. She recognized me from a picture. And I said, yes, I'm an astronaut. And she introduced herself, and she told me that she was very passionate about space. And uh, her passion was, was so much that she, she gave me an interview. And I was surprised how uh, mature and enthusiastic she was. I was smitten. And so I thought, hey, you know, if you keep training like this, maybe one day you will be an astronaut, and I will be your instructor. And we just, uh, from that conversation, it just uh, became this um, mentorship, mentee relationship. And, uh, uh, to have her as a, as my Earth liaison is, I think, is a, is a very cool thing because she can use the language of of, of kids her own age when I can't, uh, because I'm you know I'm 36 and I'm and I'm Italian, so uh, she can speak like a 15 year old uh, American girl, and I think it's a great way to communicate what uh, what dreams can do if you follow them with passion and and with your desire and your and your uh, will to do well. Hi, my name is Jared Aya, and I'm in seventh grade, and my question is for Chris. What are the immediate effects of weightlessness on the body? Well, the immediate effects, right when you get to space, uh, you notice the fluid shifting around in, in your body. Um, we have to pee out a bunch of extra fluid, and some moves up to your head, so you get some uh, stuffiness in your sinuses, and your nose kind of runs for maybe a day or two, and then that kind of goes away as your body gets more used to it. And then over a period of a few weeks, your legs get used to not having the, uh, the weight on them. Like Luca was saying, your muscles kind of can rest for a while. So what I've noticed is tightness and stiffness in my leg muscles uh, that I really need to uh, pay attention to when we do our exercises and to stretch a little bit because I can really tell that they're getting uh, tight. Hi, my name is Ben Landry, and I'm in the sixth grade. My question is for Karen. What are some of the physical requirements for becoming an astronaut? One of the main things is to be very healthy, especially when we're spending long times, a long amount of time up on the space station, because even though we're all trained to take care of small medical um, problems, if there was a major medical problem, we would have to um, take a Soyuz home and end our mission early. And so being very healthy is one of the main requirements. But also, also exercising. We exercise over two hours every single day to maintain our bone strength and our muscle strength. And so being that uh, healthy on, when you're on the ground on Earth helps when you need to exercise on orbit. And plus just being healthy, having a healthy body maintains a healthy mind, I believe. Hi. Hi. My name is Benjamin Sedalas. I'm in eighth grade. My question is for Luca. What types of workouts do you do in space? So, um, just uh, going back to what Karen just said, we work out about two hours every day. So we have uh, three kinds of, um, of machines here on orbit that we can use. One is a sort of a bicycle. Uh, the only difference is that we don't have a seat and we don't have handles because in space you float, so all you have to do is strap into your pedals and start pedaling. And that, for me, is actually the hardest exercise because it's a, it's a very hard, um, it's really hard on your muscles and, and on your heart. Uh, the second machine that we use is a treadmill. And it's uh, it's fantastic because what we do we have this um, the, this uh, vest that we wear with uh, bindings so that we can simulate gravity and and stay put when we when we run on this treadmill and we can we can vary the speed so that uh, to exercise our legs and our heart at different levels. 
and the third machine is called ARED, is a resistive device. With that, uh, even though we are weightlessness, uh, in weightlessness here, we can simulate weights, and so we can lift weights, we can do uh, squats and uh, shoulder press and uh, uh, bench pressing, all Basically, most of the exercises that we do on the ground, we can we manage to do here on orbit so that we can keep our body healthy. Hello, my name is Josh Sear, and I'm a seventh grade student. Uh, my question is for Chris. Uh, what is your favorite part about being an astronaut? Well, this is, this is going to sound a little silly, but that answer is, is being in space. I've been an astronaut for, um, I guess, 10 years now, and I've been in space for uh, two times. The first time was two weeks, and this time has been about two and a half months and, and counting up till my, the end, which will be about six months up here. But if you add all that together, that's not a very big chunk out of 10 years. Um, so... So we, as astronauts, really look forward to the time when we can actually be in space. Now, what do we do on the ground? We, we train for, for our own missions, or we work in a supporting role for other missions that are going on, either in mission control or helping with uh, uh, equipment or meetings and that sort of thing, and then, uh, and then outreach and get to go talk to groups like you guys in person. Maybe uh, after this mission, I'll come back and I'll be in the Massachusetts, New England area, and I'll go to schools just like yours. So those are some of the things we do, but in all honesty, it's, uh, we really, really cherish the times that we can be up here on, in space floating around like this. Hi, my name is Lauren Casper and I'm in eighth grade. Uh, this question is for Karen. How do you wash your long hair in space? She doesn't. <laughs> well, I've been, been getting that question a lot. I actually I wash my hair about twice a week, and I leave it out kind of like this, like it is now. And we have some uh, no-rinse shampoo, which I like to use water with. I don't want to use just the shampoo. And so I squirt some of the shampoo onto my scalp, and I rub it in real good. Sometimes I'll take a washcloth to help rub it in, and then I'll squirt some warm water and kind of work it out to the tips of my hair. And, uh, and then scrub a little more, and then take a, dr a dry towel, and dry it, comb it, and voila, clean hair. <laughs> Hi, my name is Natalie Fenoff. I'm in the sixth grade. My question is for Luca. When you were younger, were you interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, or did you find other subjects more interesting? So I thought you were going to ask me how I shampoo my hair, but <laughs> but I guess that that's not very interesting. So so when I was a kid, I um, it, this this may sound cheesy, but I, I I did really like science and technology, and uh, since since I was a, a kid, I as a matter of fact, I I remember reading comic books where the main guy was an inventor and he always invented things, and I thought that that was the, the coolest thing ever. Uh, it was a, a um, this, this kind of wizard uh, technician. So uh, that, that really got me into, into, into science as a kid. And then uh, I actually went to a scientific high school, which is a, in, in the Italian school system is, is a way to get really really close to uh, to science, even at the high school level. Uh, and I, I just always liked it. And of course, when you talk about science, Science, engineering, technology—all those things really go, uh, really go, really go together. And uh, and of course, math is is sort of like the glue that uh, keeps it all together. So yes, the the short answer is yes. I was very interested in uh, in uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Hi, my name is Danielle Damasio. I'm in sixth grade. My question is for Chris. What kind of experiments are you currently performing on the ISS? 
Well, there's uh, several types, some that are, are just going on all the time that we really don't interact with. Maybe some of those are outside the space station and a few inside here as well. And there's a handful that we uh, activate and then they run on their own. And then a few that we are active participants in each time the experiment goes. And uh, an example of those are medical experiments, perhaps with uh, ultrasound uh, of our spines or various other, other things. Um, and then one of, one of the ones that I've been doing a lot has to do with combustion and, uh, uh, and safety properties of different materials. And we have just off to our left here, there's a glove box, a research glove box, where we, uh, in a controlled environment, ignite certain materials and see how, uh, how it resists to, to combustion. And, uh, and that's really been a fun thing for me to do because what guy, kid, person doesn't enjoy uh, playing with fire in space or on Earth. So that's a lot of fun. And then a really nice uh, experiment also has been with fluid flow and uh, figuring out different shapes of containers that can move fluid without a pump just by the shape of the container. Those have been really interesting experiments for me to participate in. Hello, my, hello, my name is Sarah Calkins and I'm in seventh grade. I have a question for Karen. What is one good thing and one bad thing about being an astronaut? It's easy to say the good things. Uh, the one good thing, we get to fly in space. Like Chris was talking about earlier, just being here is absolutely fantastic. This is an opportunity that very few people um, on our planet Earth get, and we are very, very fortunate to be some of the, some of the lucky few. One of the bad things, it requires time away uh, when our training, time away from home and your family, and then obviously now, not unlike uh, folks in our military that have to spend time away from their families. Uh, so I think that would be that would be my the the least um, the, the the worst thing about being an astronaut is having to be away from home. Hello, my name is Althea Smith. I'm an eighth grader, and my question is for Luca. How much time do you spend on the computer or using social media? So, um, <laughs> I'm not much of a computer geek, honestly. So I only I only picked up uh, the social media thing uh, in recent years when I when I became an astronaut, and I thought that uh, this is such a unique experience that it would be wasted uh, if I didn't share it with as many people uh, as I could. I, and I took it as a personal mission to show people that that. We are normal people. Uh, we are very privileged to have a very cool job, and so I started. Um, I started. Uh, uh, being active on the computer and social media. Here on the station, we are very busy. It's, it's incredible how time flies. So we only spend, I, I can only spend about uh, half an hour through the, throughout the whole day, about half an hour on the computer trying to update my, my, my status uh, and keep people uh, up with what we are doing here on the station and to post pictures of the Earth, which is uh, the most magnificent sight I've ever seen. Hi, my name is Nicole Sackaberry. I'm in seventh grade, and this question is for Chris. What is your favorite part about living in microgravity? Hmm, let's see. I think just getting used to how, how lightly you can push and, and, and go places. At the, when I first got here, I wanted to push really hard. Uh, and feeling like I needed to use the same amount of force that I that you use on Earth to walk somewhere, for instance. And uh, as I've been here longer, it's really been neat to to experiment with just how little you can push off and, and go places. And just imagine if in the room that you're sitting right now, instead of all of you on your chairs in your gymnasium or auditorium, everyone's floating around and crashing into each other in that, in that room, uh, how fun it would be. And that's kind of how it is up here. We have crashes. Right now we're very calm and coordinated in front of you. But when the camera's off, we come crashing in and, and, uh, and have to get used to traveling up here in zero gravity. So, so that's the most uh, fun thing, is just floating around. Hi, my name is Megan Briggs. I'm in eighth grade, and my question is for Karen. Since you and your husband are both astronauts, do you think that your son, Jack, would want to be an astronaut too, and would you want him to be? Well, Jack right now is three years old. 
So it's really hard to say what he's going to end up doing. We're getting indications that he is technically minded um, to some degree, but that's kind of hard to tell by a three-year-old. But my hope for him is that he finds something that he's passionate about, whatever it is, whether it be space or something else. Space to him might become such an ordinary thing that, that he doesn't find it the same, you know, the same uh, passion about it that I did when I was a kid. So I just, my, like I said, my hope for him is that he finds something that he's passionate about and that he finds the drive to work hard at it and um, we'll be there to help him as much as we can in whatever he chooses to do. This is Kelly Gravison again. I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy and important schedules to talk to us. Chris or Karen or Luca, we'd love to have you come visit us in Douglas anytime. We'll set it up. Um, and we wish you luck as you continue your mission, and we look forward to your safe return home. Thank you very much, uh, Kelly, and everybody there in Douglas. We really appreciate it, and uh, you guys have a fantastic summer. Congratulations on finishing the school year. Bye-bye.